this is Yusuf here, and um, I realize I'm not going to be able to get to make a video about Basil the Great tonight. Um, but there's a lot of things that I have to address because they keep coming up and people keep asking me about them. For um, a couple people had asked me about it. This sign is ICXC. This is the sign you will see used by every Eastern Orthodox priest um, all throughout church, all throughout liturgy, the, the services, um, and not even just divine liturgy on Sundays, but Vespers, Orthros. This is the sign that the Eastern Orthodox priest makes. It's ICXC, Jesus Christus. Um, and it symbolizes Jesus Christ, one and the same, a defeat of Gnosticism. That's what, that's what this, where this comes from. It's I recently learned the Westerners call it nomen sacra. I guess it's a Latin term, but they're Greek letters and it's ICXC. Uh, another thing to the Protestants, <laughs> usually it's known that Marcion caused a people to start thinking about the canon of scripture. Now, the finalized form is later, and there was disputed books, and we actually have a list of Christians from, I believe, the second century, second or third century. It's called the Moratorium Canon, where it's um, a list of of books that are accepted, disputed, and spurious. And uh, we can kind of see the formation of the New Testament canon. Now, the four Gospels were accepted. The funny thing is about the four Gospels that are in the Bible is that the way we get the names from them is from tradition. Uh, and I had mentioned before in previous video that there are parts of Mark and John, the Gospels that aren't in early manuscripts. The church remembered and put in because at the end of John it says there are so many more stories about Jesus and people know them. Um, almost, uh, all the Gnostic Gospels that I know of claim to be authorship of the apostles, outrightly stated who they are. That I am writing this to you. This is the secret message that Jesus gave me. And I'm not, I don't want to cause a huge controversy with um, James at Pandora's box. I'm not talking about one specific form of Gnosticism. Now, Gnostics had, there were different groups of them. So I'm not claiming any, I don't want people to associate when I'm talking about the different groups that, that he would automatically accept these or something like that. Um, no. Um, or that he, I mean, he rejects Marcion, as do I. <laughs> but this fig, fig sex, F-I-G-S-X, on James White's channel, believes the propaganda of the, Protest of the evangelical Protestants that just after the last apostles died, or maybe before, and he, he actually said that the apostles and the disciples put together the canon, which is not true. Uh, in fact, each city had their own groupings of works. Some would have, you know, maybe the Gospel of Luke, um, or a version of the Gospel of Luke with some letters of Paul. And uh, Rome may have had a version of Mark, and uh, possibly some other writings, uh, Clement, Shepherd of Hermas, the Didache. Uh, it's very common to find the Didache in ancient codices, and the ancient Christians knew it. Um, and we know, okay, Paul's letter to the Romans. Now, if you if you actually think about it for two seconds, let's. Just assume sola scriptura is 
let, let, let's assume that all the, all the writings in the Bible, in the New Testament, are written to the people who they're said they're written to, and by the people who they're written by. So, the letter of Romans would be in Rome. It wasn't like an encyclical, like something that got copied, at, copied down and passed around. It wasn't meant for that purpose. All the, all, Romans kind of was, though. It, I mean, it was a huge display of the salvation of man. Corinth. The two letters to Corinth are, are addressing specific things, and they're specifically for the Corinthians. You have Ephesians. You have Colossians. You have James writing an epistle. You have the epistles of John that are sometimes to individuals. You have the pastoral epistles of Paul. And let's just, for argument's sake, credit them to be of Pauline origin. That are to Titus, Timothy, people. They're two people. All right? Um, you have different community, different views on, on different things. Now, we'll just say they, they, that nothing contradicts. Um, by the end of the first century, these would be spread all over the place, and nobody would have access to all of them. Especially seeing that the um, that they were very rare, uh, and as the Gospels popped up and the works of Paul, there were spurious works. To say God put the New Testament together is to say the church was guided by the Holy Spirit. I don't know if Protestants realize what they're saying when they say this. Um, people can infer that the Gospel of John was written by John because John is left out and it just says the beloved disciple. People say that's a, that's a way of, hum of being humble. <clears throat> Mark, Mark's not, no, the Gospel of Mark doesn't say Mark wrote it. Papias says Mark wrote it, John Mark wrote it. Um, same goes for Matthew and Luke. Uh, the compilation of the Bible, it, it, it's very odd that people would just assume, well, it was all, by the end of the first century, it was all together. Which I think Jehovah's Witnesses actually claim this. What about some things that aren't in the Bible that, that Christians believe? The word Trinity is in the Bible. Christians believe that. Hypostatic union. But these things can be demonstrated from the Bible. I mean, uh, Nicaea try does its best to um, take use ideas that are contained in the Bible. But the funny thing is, is that um, there was never, there wasn't, at that point, there wasn't a universal canon. The church had accepted these works on what? What did they accept the, the works on? On tradition. Well, reason why we listen to Paul, why we listen to, uh, why we use the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Mark and not, let's say, you know, the secret Gospel of James or the Gospel of Mary Magdalene or the sayings of Thomas is because this is what was handed down to us. This is what we got handed down. So not even Nicaea backs up Sola Scriptura because it's, it's 325 A.D., uh, which is almost 300 years after the crucifixion of Christ. And the books that they're using, the reason they're using them is because so-and-so used them. So-and-so recognizes the authority, and he was taught by so-and-so, and he was taught by so-and-so, and he was taught by so-and-so, and he was taught by um, Polycarp, who knew Ignatius of Antioch, who was taught by the Apostle John. Um... A claim that Douglas Wilson makes is that it's insane to believe the Eastern Orthodox Church is older than the Roman Catholic Church. Um, 
that's jaw dropping to find out because the Eastern Orthodox, the, the ancient church is surrounded by is by seas, and Antioch was established before Rome. Even the Roman Catholics will tell you that. Now, yes, in the early days we all called ourselves Catholic. We still call ourselves Catholic, but when you designate it got designated Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox. The Romans will claim to be Orthodox and the Orthodox will claim to be Catholic because it was a word, it was a term first put forth by um, Ignatius of Antioch. <clears throat> I want to know from you evangelists, you evangelicals, you say you believe in Sola Scriptura, yet you believe in original sin from St. Augustine and you believe in Anselm's idea of blood atonement. Where do you get those from? Those aren't in the Bible. You think Jesus died to take the sins of mankind because God, God the Father would have punished you. And that the only way to get out of it was you have to believe in Jesus because he, he basically took the fall for you. That you weren't saved from sin, you were actually saved from, from God's judgment against your sin. That's Anselm. That's the Roman Catholic Church of the 11th, 12th century. Why do you believe that? If you believe in Sola Scriptura, yet you fully believe in uh, original sin that comes from St. Augustine, you fully believe in um, Anselm, just as John Calvin did. Um, the Eastern Church, when we saw the book of Revelations, we said, we've never seen this before. We, we've never seen this. It's not allowed to be read in the churches because we don't know what this is. We're the most ancient communities of Christians, and we don't know this. It says the writer John of Patmos, but we know the Apostle John did not write this. May have been a devout Christian, may have been from God, but we have never seen this before. We don't take new stuff. The Western churches, it's read in church, like the Roman Catholic, because they're descendants of the Roman Catholic Church. We, for us, we say, okay, people can read it in private. It's not anti-Christian, but we're not going to read it in church for the, just the singular purpose that um, it claims to be from a certain period, and why have we never seen it before? In the Moratorian Canon, it's listed as disputed, as accepted and disputed. And it, there's a note saying, watch out for this. Um, I have a hard time understanding you guys, you Protestants. And I know m most of my viewers, and probably none of are not Protestant, none of my subscribers are Protestant, but it's just baffling. Sola Scriptura, the Bible alone, I get all my theology from the Bible, and then you believe in blood atonement from Anselm, and you believe in original sin from Augustine. And you rely on, I mean, heavily the church, all, the, all pastors from the Protestants, well, I shouldn't say all of them, rely on the church fathers, but, um, this somebody this this FIGSX claimed oh, all he all heresies come from tradition. No, actually, in fact, most heresies come from Scripture itself. In fact, when the Bible or when <laughs> when Satan spoke against Christ, he used the text of the Bible to try to screw to try to mess him up. When Jesus, when the story of when Jesus was tempted in the desert, he quoted things straight out of the Bible. Heresies begin with, instead of embracing the Catholic belief of looking at the Bible, interpreting it for yourself, and coming up with something that nobody's ever heard of before. Arianism. Uh, I could go through and list, but I'm running out of time right now. Marcion cut out stuff. His private interpretation. Uh... Nestorius, the Jehovah's Witness, got it from no tradition. They rejected tradition. The Mormons rejected tradition. Uh, the Seventh-day Adventist rejected any traditional interpretation. Uh, the Pentecost 
Pentecostal oneness rejected all of that. And they're Sabellianists. Heresies specifically come from reading the scriptures and interpreting them against what the church has always believed. That's where heresy comes from. Remember this. The sign of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Peace to you. May God save Serbia. This has been Yusuf. Caused a people to start thinking about the canon of Scripture. Now, the finalized form is later, and there was disputed books, and we actually have a list of Christians from, I believe, 2nd century, 2nd or 3rd century. It's called the Moratorium Canon, where it's um, a list of, of books that are accepted. This is Yusuf here, and um, I realize I'm not going to be able to get to make a video about Basil the Great tonight. Um, but there's a lot of things that I have to address because they keep coming up and people keep asking me about them. For um, a couple people had asked me about it. This sign is ICXC. This is the sign you will see used by disputed and spurious. And uh, we can kind of see the formation of the New Testament canon. Now, the four Gospels were accepted. The funny thing is about the four Gospels that are in the Bible is that the way we get the names from them is from tradition. Jesus Christ, one and the same, a defeat of Gnosticism. That's what, that's what this, where this comes from. It's... I, recently learned the Westerners call it Nomina Sacra. I guess it's a Latin term, but they're Greek letters and it's ICXC. Uh, another thing to the Protestants. <laughs> Usually, it's known that Marcion, every Eastern Orthodox priest um, all throughout church, all throughout liturgy, the, the services, um, and not even just divine liturgy on Sundays, but Vespers or Thros. This is the sign that the Eastern Orthodox priest makes. It's ICXC, Jesus Christus. Um, and it symbolizes 